remember, part two was the one that is going to allow us to evaluate integrals. In fact, it's called the Integral Evaluation Theorem uh, by some people, some textbooks. Um, so it, it shows us how to analytically evaluate uh, definite integrals where, um, well, where we're able to find antiderivatives. So let's, let's go ahead and do another example here. Uh, if we want to integrate x squared plus 3x minus 10 from 0 to 4 along the x-axis, um, what do we do? This is another one of the ones that we did an example of, and we just did it on the calculator. Uh, we're going to do it now without the calculator. Um, what's the first thing we need to do to evaluate this? We need to find an... Antiderivative, anti yes. So we can do that term by term. Um, what would we take the derivative of to get x squared? Three x three. It would be x to the third times... Divided by three. Yeah, divided by 3. Okay, so we're going to divide by that, that new exponent. Um, so that's just kind of the, the opposite uh, of the power rule we use for derivatives. Um, then we're going to have 3x squared divided by 2. And we're going to have minus 10x, because that's going to be x to the 0. When we integrate that, we get x to the first, divided by 1, right? And then if, if we wanted to be general about it, uh, if we wanted to show every antiderivative of this, we would put a plus c here, right? Don't put the plus c on your paper. Because... The theorem, this fundamental theorem of calculus, says it can be any antiderivative. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the antiderivative where c equals 0 um, so that we don't have to worry about that constant at the end. Okay? Uh, it doesn't matter if you put a constant there. Actually, if we were to evaluate this with like a plus 4 here at the end, we're still going to get the same answer. Um, and if you want to figure out why, you can do that on your own. Um, and then we want to evaluate this at... 4 and at 0. So we're going to plug 4 in for x and figure out what that is and then we're going to put 0 in for x and we're going to figure that out what that is and we're going to subtract them. So this is going to then equal 4 cubed over 3 plus 3 times 4 squared over 2 minus 10 times 4 Minus, when we put zero in, what's going to happen? Yeah, it's just zero. Zero is usually pretty easy to work with, right? Um, so if we were to write this as an exact answer, uh, it would be 16 thirds, or that is approximately 5.3 repeating, or 5.333 if we were going to round to three decimal places. Um, and, and when we did this example before, we just we plugged this into the calculator. Um, we, we did them two different ways, and I don't know which way you chose to do it, but we had the fn int function on the home screen, or we just had the integral function on the graph itself. Um, I like the graph because it shows us what area that it is adding. Um, either way, though, we get this answer. And this is the same answer we got before, in case you're curious. Any questions about that one? Okay, uh, this is another one that we did. This is actually a really easy one. Because the antiderivative of e to the x is e to the x. So we're going to evaluate e to the x um, at 5 and 0. Now, let me, let me just stop here and uh, make a note about this notation here. Um, it's understood that these are x values right now, that we're putting 0 in for x and we're putting 5 in for x. There will be times when we're going to evaluate it with, uh, with respect to a different variable. So let's say that we had used substitution or something at some point in this problem. Um, we may write the same notation like this, x equals 5, and x equals 0. Um, and, and that's just to keep it clear which variable we're using. 
because if we were to use substitution at some point, the x values, uh, a 0 for an x value is not necessarily going to be a 0 for a u value or whatever variable we're using for substitution. Um, so you may, may see the notation like this, uh, and you'll, you'll need to be able to use this because we will be using substitution uh, quite a bit later on, actually. Um, so when we evaluate this, we get e to the fifth minus e to the zero, which is the same thing as e to the fifth minus uno. Now, if you guys remember when we did this one, I told you to type in e to the fifth minus one in your calculator, and that's what we got. This is why, um, because you're, you're able to evaluate this um, using the second fundamental theorem of calculus fairly easily. Any questions about this one? All right, last one then. This one looks fun, doesn't it? <laughs> Maybe. Um, anybody know what the antiderivative of secant squared is? Is it secant to the third divided by three? No, because then we'd have chain rule problems there, right? What do we take the derivative of to get secant squared? Tangent. So the antiderivative of secant squared of x is just tangent of x. And we want to evaluate that at pi over 4 and negative pi over 4. Um, what quadrant is, we know pi over 4 is in the first quadrant. What quadrant is negative pi over 4 in? Is, it's in the fourth. Um, is that positive or negative in the fourth quadrant? Tangent. It's going to be negative, um, but it's the same reference angle as pi over 4, right? So since it's the same reference angle, it's going to be the same value but negative. That should make things easier for us. Uh, the tangent of pi over 4 or 45 degrees is what? 1. So we're going to have 1 minus negative 1. Did I do that right? which is dose. What do you guys think about that one? Good stuff? Okay. Um, that kind of wraps up what we're going to talk about with that. We are, we're going to use that a lot. Um, we're, we're going to get into it a lot more next chapter where we're going to look at um, how we actually find the antiderivatives for different types of functions. Um, so throughout pretty much the rest of the year, we're going to be using these definite integrals and the second fundamental theorem of calculus to evaluate it. Um, it's really pretty much as important as taking a derivative. Um, it, it's, it would be the equivalent in, for this section of the class. It would be the equivalent of taking the derivative. And you guys remember how much we took derivatives, right? And how important those became for us. Um, same thing here with the definite integrals.